Hi everyone. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, ad adaptively attribute hiding in the product encryption today. My name is Katsuyuki Takashima from Mitsubishi Electric. This is a joint work with Tatsaki Okamoto. So first, I will introduce a notion of functional encryption. Um, in the encryption system, uh, encryption or ciphertext has a parameter. Uh, this is denoted uh, phi in this slide. And also, a uh, secret key has another parameter psi. And uh, some relation between these parameters, R is predetermined. And if that relation holds, then the decryption succeeds. So uh, in other words, uh, this relation uh, controls the decryption mechanism uh, or combining access structure by, defined by R and encryption decryption functionality. So uh, in a recent paper by uh, Bonnet Sahai Waters, this type of functional encryption is called predicate encryption. And in that paper, uh, functional encryption is defined as a more general uh, notion of encryption scheme. Anyway, uh, we uh, deal with this type of functional encryption. And in particular, uh, in a product predicate, uh, we use, and uh, that is uh, predicate uh, relation R is defined the vector orthogonality between two vector, vector B and vector X. Usually, uh, one, one parameter, one vector, is associated with some predicate, and the other one is attribute. So using this uh, predicate, uh, any CNF and DNF formulas and polynomial evaluation can be realized. So and at present, uh, this predicate has uh, <coughs> interesting properties. That is, it's the widest for achieving attribute hiding security. Attribute hiding, uh, roughly saying uh, that uh, hi hiding uh, not only message, but also attribute from the attacker. So that uh, property is useful for, uh, for example, uh, searchable encryption or some other uh, applications. So uh, the syntax or uh, algorithm uh, consists of four algorithms, set up, keygen, and encryption decryption. In a similar way as uh, identity-based encryption. So of course, you know, this encryption system is a generalization of identity-based encryption. And uh, we turn to a security notion. And the security notion is also defined in a generalized manner in, as uh, identity-based encryption. So uh, first, a weak version of attribute hiding security is given by this game and uh, adversary uh, ask several times uh, key queries. And at some time, adversary declare the challenge attribute and also uh, challenge messages. So uh, the point is uh, of weekly attribute hiding case is that adversary uh, can query, key, que key query for uh, uh, non-matching key, that is, uh, so relation for the uh, queried vector uh, and uh, challenge attribute, the relation does not hold. So this uh, condition is uh, essential in weak attribute hiding setting. And from this definition, uh, some additional uh, unnecessary information on attribute may be revealed to a person uh, with a matching key. So uh, from uh, <coughs> a practical and theoretical view, it is not uh, desirable. So we uh, consider 
more strong version of attribute hiding security. So the security is uh, in a similar way as before, but uh, the important point is adversary can uh, ask uh, both type of keys that is matching uh, or uh, decryptable key or uh, non-matching keys. So, of course, if adversary uh, ask a matching key, so uh, he can uh, decrypt the challenge ciphertext. So, uh, mes challenge messages should be equal for a non-trivial security notion. So, but uh, for uh, this security notion, uh, from this security notion, any additional information of attribute is not revealed uh, to any person, even to a uh, matching key holder. So uh, we consider this type of uh, inner product encryption. And for our uh, security proof, uh, we define an auxiliary parameter S S is equal to zero if uh, challenge message and not equal, and otherwise S is one. So uh, previously, uh, several uh, attribute hiding in a product encryption were proposed, and first, uh, Kat Sahai Waters proposed free attribute hiding in a product encryption scheme, but uh, their scheme is uh, just selectively secure. Selective, in the selective security game, adversary uh, should declare challenge attribute at the start of the game. So it is a weak notion of security. And after that, uh, these works uh, proposed adaptively secure in a product scheme, but their schemes uh, just weakly attribute hiding. And uh, recently, in a uh, uh, little bit different line of work, uh, some uh, inner product encryption uh, was constructed from lattice, lattice assumption, but this scheme is uh, just selectively secure and weakly attribute hiding. So uh, now, uh, <coughs> to construct in a product encryption with nice secu two nice security property, adaptively secure and fully attribute hiding. So such scheme uh, to con construct such scheme is an open problem. And uh, this work addresses such uh, problem and constructed adaptively secure and fully attribute hiding in a product uh, from the standard pairing assumption, distributed linear assumption. So uh, this is our uh, main result, I said. And uh, we also extended this construction first uh, to a more efficient one that is in a product encryption with a shorter master public key and uh, secret keys. And in particular, secret key size is constant. Constant means uh, excluding the description of uh, the V vector. So such usage is a common practice in broadcast encryption and in a product encryption. And also, we extended our construction to a hierarchical IPE with the same security and with the same efficiency. So these are our result in this uh, talk. And this table shows a comparison with previous one and our schemes. And in particular, this uh, left last column uh, shows our achievement. Uh, security is adaptive and free attribute hiding from additional linear and public key and secret key size uh, shorter than before. So uh, we omit the detail of, so uh, 
To obtain these schemes, we employed two key techniques. First, uh, we extended uh, dual system encryptions, first introduced by Waters. Uh, this, uh, so we extended this methodology for our purpose because the original dual system encryptions had uh, basically two types of key and cipher attackers, that is uh, normal and semi-functional. And these forms are suitable for uh, non-matching key, uh, non-matching key case. But uh, our situation, fully attribute hiding, should deal with both case, matching and non-matching keys. So uh, we should extend uh, various forms uh, dual system encryption. So uh, the, um, we remark that in our uh, uh, game transformations, all forms of a secret key should not depend on whether uh, it is matching or non matching. So it is a key point to achieve adaptive, rec adaptive security. So uh, we will, uh, I will explain this later. And also, we employ our dual pairing vector space approach. And this gives a rich basic transformations, uh, informational theoretically and computational, computational transformations. And this is for achieving these various forms. In particular, uh, <coughs> uh, we, we used large hidden subspace uh, to, to n dimension, for this n is a vector dimension, to n dimension subspaces, and it gives new types of information theoretically and computational transformations. So uh, we recap uh, dual pairing vector space uh, approach. Uh, we uh, construct our scheme on uh, uh, direct product of symmetric pairing groups. And on that vector space, there is a canonical pairing operation like this. So for this pairing operations, we consider dual random bases. Uh, this base B is uh, given from uh, random full matrix uh, X and uh, using uh, transpose dual matrix, uh, we obtain a dual basis. So uh, this basis has uh, these uh, dual orthonormal properties. So uh, our approach is uh, <coughs> to construct a crypto primitive using uh, these random dual basis as a master key pair. Uh, B is a master public key, and B star is master secret key, and Cypher text is uh, generated on the basis B, and the key is generated on the basis B star, and decryption is given by the pairing of these vector elements. So uh, <coughs> it is a simple approach, and we developed a machinery to obtain our scheme uh, from additional linear assumptions. So, uh, we introduce a, a simple notation for our, our description. Uh, for a scalar vector x, this symbol denotes this uh, linear combination x1, b1 plus blah, 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 plus xn, bn. So uh, for these, and this, this vector element is uh, obtained uh, along with a dual basis p star. So for this vector element, uh, we note that a simple fact uh, for this element, a pairing value is given by the, uh, this uh, inner product of scalar vector x and y. So uh, there are several interactable problems, and these problems that support uh, the security of our scheme. And uh, but uh, so for uh, not so much time, these assumptions are reduced from decisional linear assumptions, and 
uh, our schemes is proven from dictionary assumptions. So uh, we describe a basic idea for our uh, inner product encryption. We use n plus one dimensional vector space, and the key is given by this form one and uh, random sigma b vector, and pictorially it is given by this form, and ciphertext is given by this form and uh, like this. So the uh, de decryption is given by this pairing. So if these vectors are also now, then the data is recovered and otherwise it's random. So we extended in the previous work uh, to a pr provably secure weekly attribute hiding scheme and that scheme's description is very similar to the uh, previous one, just using a large space, three and two dimensional space, and this n dimensional block is not used for real encoding, and this n block is for randomness for secret, uh, secret key, and the last one is randomness for ciphertext. So, uh, our proposed scheme uh, is uh, very, has a very similar description, and the only change is this uh, hidden subspace, uh, enlarged to two n dimensional. So the description is very, very uh, similar, but uh, the security proof is uh, very different. So to turn to the security proof, uh, first, uh, the original security game is changed to game zero prime, and in the game, uh, challenger first flip a coin T, and at the challenge phase, if T is not equal to S, so the challenger aborts this game. And if a uh, game is aborted, so uh, we define the success probability of the uh, adversary is defined to one half. So from this definition, this inequality and ob is obtained, and this uh, left one is negligible from our previous work, and this right one is our target, and we bound this quantity. So uh, we recap uh, very briefly dual system encryption. In the original DSE methodology, ciphertext Chinese ciphertext is, is turned to a somewhat random uh, semi-functional form, and the keys change semi-functional one by one, and uh, at last, uh, Chinese ciphertext is, is a random form. So uh, these changes can be done under this non-matching condition. This condition is uh, crucial for that proof, and in a previous scheme, same functional ciphertext and the same functional keys are given by this form, and this orange part are filled with a random coefficient, and these part correlate, and this correlation gives a, a security proof for just weakly attribute hiding. So uh, we should uh, extend uh, this methodology and uh, we start a simple from simple observation so if this, this holds, then the uh, random combination, uh, this is also going to also to vector V, and if this hold, and this uh, non orthogonality hold. So that is, relation R is preserved by the random linear combination of X0 and X1. And uh, this form is independent of the challenge bit B, so our game of this transformation is changed to this uh, B unbiased form. So to obtain to this cipher text, we employ several uh, intermediate game transformations, and first cipher text is changed to this form by additional linear assumptions, and uh, key is changed to this form. And uh, after that, this is uh, uh, different from the previous one. This part is randomized in this uh, two-dimensional subspace. And after that, uh, keys is, this part is swapped to the second block. 
So we note that these uh, temporal forms of keys uh, are not, uh, does not depend on matching or non-matching. So uh, it's a key point to achieve adaptive security, and we repeat uh, this process for each queried keys. So uh, after that, we obtain this form. Cyphertext has this uh, two-dimensional random vector, and this part is here. So these results are reflected to the uh, first real encoding part, and this is a uh, uh, fully unbiased form, ciphertext. So our proof is completed and uh, summari summarizing. Original DSC methodology is given by this form and our extended form is given by this form and a uh, little bit uh, a complicated change, but these forms are not depend uh, matching or not matching and uh, this is a biased form. So, uh, uh, in the remaining time, very briefly, we sketch our efficient scheme. We used, uh, in the basic scheme, N plus one scheme, we use this N plus one special or uh, sparse matrix. And for this uh, basis, secret key is given by this form and these uh, part are common in this element, so uh, secret key can be compressed to only uh, through group elements. And this scheme is basic construction, so we extend this scheme to a provable secure one, and uh, the details are omitted, but uh, the secret key size is uh, 11 group element plus uh, description of uh, vector V. So uh, that's all. Thank you. We uh, we have time for one super super quick question. Anyone would like to? Anyone? Good. Let's uh, thank Katsuyuki.